Hey everybody, Hunter back again from Showtime Studios. Uh, what we're going to be working on on this tutorial is how to create uh, a rusty look on your models. And this is going to be more toward the heavy rust side. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, uh, this is actually the roof on my Mobius F100 that I'm doing. And you can see the texture that's in that and the color variations and it uh, comes out pretty good it, it has a very realistic look to it and also on the door here which is not really a rust technique it's just a uh, it's a faded um, flaking paint technique uh, but it basically works the same way so I'm going to show you how to do what's on the roof here and we're going to be doing it on the hood for this model so what I'm going to be doing on video is actually going to be going on the one of my finished models. Um, there's some people out there that said that uh, that I'm not showing all the uh, tricks and the tips and not giving all the information. Well, I'm going to do it right in front of you like I normally do on my videos. And this hood will be used on the Mobius F100 build, the buddy build that I'm doing with uh, Steve Courtney. And um, it will also go into competition starting... Uh, September uh, at the PenCon show in Pennsylvania. So first off, what we're going to be working with is a hair dryer, and I'm going to run down through all the list of everything that we're going to be using. 91% uh, rubbing alcohol, some water. Um, I have a flat, wider brush. This is actually what I call a good brush. And I have a old brush, which is a fairly large brush. Uh, it was flat at one time. It's kind of wore out now, but it's just, uh, I'll show you what we use that for. So if you have an old brush laying around, it'll be a good purpose for, this, for that part. And uh, next we have, let's see, the base color that we used under this is XF9 from uh, Tamaya. And this is Hall Red. And that's actually what I used to create the uh, ruddy brown primer color. And the next thing that we sprayed on it is this Vallejo Orange Rust. Now this actually come out of a rust and streaking kit. But you could use uh, any lighter orange or you could even use a gray if you wanted to. Um, but what I'm trying to do is simulate surface rust uh, when it's done. So that's why I'm using this orange tone here. And the next thing that we're going to be using is just some typical uh, just salt uh, in the salt shaker. Nothing special. It's just regular table salt. And we're going to be using some light sea gray from Tamayo, which is XF25. And uh, that's actually a greenish gray. And what else are we going to be using? I think that's about it. Oh, uh, one of the key components to this is the airbrush. Um, I'm going to be using a side feed Grex. This is one of the older airbrushes we have. And it works good for this uh, weathering technique that I'm doing. And right now I've got it sitting down here clipped over my trash can. So, And uh, what we'll be uh, working on is the hood for the Mobius F100. Now, as you can see on this hood, it's a little bit lighter of a color in the center. Uh, what that is, is that is the light rust Vallejo that has been sprayed over top of the hull red, which is pretty much what's on the sides of the hood and on the front of the hood. And the reason why I've done that is because this is an upper surface and um, I'm doing color modulation on this build, which means that uh, all the colors and all the rust gets... Uh, uh, darker at the bottom and lighter at the top, so that's why I went with the brighter orange um, for the surface rust. So I'm going to pan the camera down here now, and uh, we'll zoom in on it real close, and I'll try to get it, you know, as focused as I can. And when I get to the hair dryer part, it might be a little loud on the on the video. So if you have it, uh, the speakers cranked way up, you might want to tweak them down a little bit. I checked it on a test video; it wasn't too bad. Um, so what I'll do is kind of hold it underneath the bench here when I do it, and it should kill the sound some, but just be prepared for that. So uh, let's pan the camera down, we'll get started on the tutorial. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. We'll get in as, about as close as we can. There we go, and hopefully you can see everything that's going on with the hood. 
And like I say, this part will be used on, on the finished model. Now, as far as the 91% uh, rubbing alcohol that I showed you, that's what I use to thin the hull red and to thin the light sea gray. I uh, did not thin this model air uh, orange rust at all. This is ready to spray out of the bottle for the most part. Um, and what I did here was sprayed directly from the bottle. Uh, so we have this already down, everything's dry here, we have the base color down and then we have the orange rust on and that is dry. Now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take our water and we're going to take our flat good brush and we're actually just going to pretty much paint the surface with the water. And you don't want it pulled up real heavy, but you want to make sure that you have uh, plenty of moisture down on the hood or whatever part you're doing to make sure that the salt sticks good to it. Um, because if the salt doesn't stick, the, uh, the effect doesn't work quite as well. And the bad thing about too much water is it actually dilutes the salt a lot and um, it creates more of a big blob of, uh, of this under color showing through so I just kind of go in and you know when you're using acrylics that aren't sealed a lot of times they will soak up a lot of water so you got to kind of come back and and get some more water in some certain spots and but just you know moisten it down like that and you can see what I have there and then basically all we're going to do is just take our salt shaker and it's a matter of how heavy of a rust you want on it as to how much salt that you actually put on and I'm wanting to rust this up pretty good as far as the paint chipping and scaling so we're going to put a fair amount on so that's what we have there and as you can see the water holds the salt onto the uh, surface and that's actually all we need to do with the salt now the next thing that um, we're going to do is I'm going to pick this up very carefully be careful how you pick it up because you can dislodge the salt very easily and this will actually be off camera because I'm going to do it under the table here for the uh, hair dryer part but all we're going to do is use a hair dryer to dry this out and it won't be totally dry but it'll be pretty close so uh, here we go with that part and I'll be back as soon as we get it to the point that it needs to be Hopefully that's not too loud on the camera, but all we're doing is just kind of, um, as you watch your salt and you're working with your hair dryer, you'll see the salt turn a bright white. That's kind of what you're looking for. That means everything is dried out pretty good for this technique and you're ready to move on to the next stage. And I've got this set on a medium setting. I don't have it on the real hot side. Uh, you could also do it on the, um, on the cool setting if you wanted to. All you're doing is just moving the air around to uh, dry up the moisture, the water that you put on the on the surface. And we've just about got it where I want it. And some people will do this technique where they put the salt on and they leave it set overnight. Um, I've actually done that on a couple of models. In fact, my GMC Astro that I've done, the... Um, cranky calendar uh, cover model that model has this technique done in it so after we've dried it out with the hair dryer this is what the surface looks like um, and you notice we got it down the sides of the hood and on the front and a lot of it across the top so that's basically the look that you're after at this stage and next we're going to move on to the airbrush and I've already got this set and it is actually a pea green color which is going to be pretty interesting along with the uh, blue door that we have so all we're going to do now is we're just going to come in and we are going to spray the green over the hood 
And you're not trying to get a real, real heavy coat. You're just trying to get enough to color the hood in to cover up all of the brown and all of that orange rust color that we put on it. And I'll have to go back and do some edges and stuff like that on the hood. Actually, I'm going to rust out the very front lip of it all together. And um, so I won't be doing all around every little nook and cranny of it. But we'll show you how it comes out uh, in a later video. This is just the stage on how to create that rust that you've seen on the roof. And we're pretty close to being done here. You don't need a lot of paint on the surface. And I normally don't spray stuff up here on the bench like this. I'm only doing it because it's uh, because of the video and, you know, happen to have the camera focused in here. So that's all you need as far as spraying it down. And it looks pretty drastic at this point. I'll hold it up here closer to the camera and you can get an idea of what the texture looks like on this thing. And if we can get it to zoom in there. And, but you can see how rough that actually is. It, it's pretty uh, scary at this point in time. But now what we're going to do is since this is acrylic, we're going to go ahead and get the hair dryer out again. And we're going to dry this out some. So I'll be right back with it. And here we go. And same setting and same speed that we used before. All we're doing is just drying up the acrylic a little bit so we can move on to the next stage. And I actually found a little spot on the side of it here that I'm not 100% happy with. So I'm going to go back and shoot just a little bit of the green back on it. Just to kind of blend that in a little bit more. Make it a little bit better. Like I say, this is going on my finished model. So even though I'm doing a tutorial, I want to make sure that it's up to what I'm looking for. There we go, that looks pretty good. Alright, now that we got that, we're going to go back to the hair dryer again. And no, I'm not doing anything tricky off camera here. All I'm doing is just waving the hair dryer back and forth on the hood. Uh, this time, just drying up the acrylic Tamaya paint. And like I say, this has been thin with 91% rubbing alcohol, so. It dries out pretty quick, and it also dries out nice and flat. You can also cut this paint with um, lacquer thinner. It'll do basically the same thing. But since I was doing acrylics on it, um, I don't really recommend, uh, since there's an acrylic underlayer, I don't really recommend the uh, lacquer thinner as a thinner um, unless you've done everything with it. And most of the time, when I'm doing acrylics, I'll use the 91% uh, rubbing alcohol. Alright, so we have the, um, all that is dried up now. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's pretty rough looking. A lot of texture in it. Now the next step that I do, at this point, and it's pretty simple, you can go in with uh, a brush and you can start knocking the salt. Um off of the surface and I'll turn around here so you can see what I'm doing all I'm doing is knocking the salt off the surface that's one way you can do it the way I like to do it that kind of speeds up the whole process and blends everything a lot better is I just take my finger and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the surface I'm just kind of running it back and forth and that creates enough friction to pull the salt loose from the hood and like I say don't put a lot of pressure down with your finger you don't need that all you're trying to do is create enough friction just to scrub the salt off of the surface and you know when you're doing it this way these paints are still kind of soft and so you don't want to grab a hold of it real hard I mean I've got it here in my hand but I'm not you know grasping the hood real real tight And 
doesn't really matter which direction you go as far as scuffing this off you can you know go around in a circle you can go back and forth you can go across um, whatever it takes to get all of the salt off of the surface that's all that you're worried about and whenever you have a raised like a body line it's like on this hood right here make sure that you get into those corners real well and next we're going to move on to using the brush to make sure that we get all the corners cleaned out and i got a little bit left over on this side i want to get rid of and not only does this give you a very good rusting and, and paint chipping technique it also gives you a little bit of texture um, without being grossly out of scale Now, I'm sure somebody's going to ask if you can do this with a spray can. Uh, yes, you could do this with a spray can, but your coats would have to be very, very light. And you would not be able to sit here, sit here at the workbench and do this in this amount of time because your spray paint's going to take a little while to dry. Uh, you, the best bet would be using a lacquer if you were going to try it with a spray paint. But, you know, let me stress again, you would have to do it very, very light because you don't want to dilute the salt because if you do it's going to kill the technique and kill what you're the finish that you're looking for and pretty much we have that white down now and that is the finished product of what the hood looks like and you can see how it's chipped and it's probably going to be hard to pick up on camera but you can see the lighter orange coming through here in the center Compared to where we've chipped it on the side, you can see the darker rust. And let's see if I can flick it in the light there. You can see it's lighter and more in here than it is on the sides. That's a darker rust on the side where the sun wouldn't be beating down on it all the time. And that's pretty much all it is to my rusting technique. Now, as far as the color modulation part that I did, I took a little bit of this and put in the airbrush as is. And I just misted it over the whole surface um, real lightly. And even over top of the darker spots down on the sides, just misted this because it is up top. And my color modulation runs all the way to the belt line on the model. And other than that, that's pretty much a finished product. Um, if you wanted to make this look like it was multiple you know, paint layers on it, you could actually go back in again. And um, if you sealed this down with like a dull coat, you could go back in and wet this down, do the salt on it again, and spray a different color. Um, where you wouldn't cover up all of the surface, you would cover up parts of it. Um, you could do all of it, and uh, that would look like multi-layers of paint um, over the years. But I'm going to go ahead and pan the camera out a little bit, and I'll bring the uh, cab over, and we'll set the hood on it, and I'll show you what the effect looks like on the, um, on the actual model. Let me make the camera a little bigger there, and we'll bring the cab over with its blue door that it has on it. And we're going to set the hood into place, and just to kind of show you the contrast um, in the colors. And that's basically what we have. And it, it actually looks very realistic, um, looks heavily weathered like it's been sitting outside for years, and uh, that's what we're after. But it's a real easy technique to do, and um, if anybody has any uh, questions or needs a little bit more help on how to do it, uh, leave me a comment on the video, and I'll get back to you on that. And if I have to do another video to show you what uh, you need help with, that's fine. Uh, just ask, and we'll take care of that. So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea on how we're doing the um, weathering on the F100, uh, my buddy build with uh, Steve Courtney. So... Um, that's all I've got for this video. Got some more coming up uh, next week, so stay tuned for them. Like always, I thank you for watching and supporting Showtime Studios, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.